So, hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking about the work that PSI has been doing in using Moodle as the backend, but delivering the Moodle courses using shellbots. But before I go into the technical side, I, I want to give you a, a, a brief introduction into the, the work that PSI does. So, PSI, or Population Services International, works in over 50 countries in different programs in different programs relating to health, yes? So we, um, we work in what is called low and middle income countries, Central Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Central America, Sub-Saharan Africa, um, and the, South, um, the, the Southeast of, of Asia. The, the work that we do is all along uh, the diseases with a higher level of burden. So we work a lot in malaria, we work in HIV, we work in sexual reproductive health. Um, um, a lot of the activities that the PSI does have to do with the delivery of services, typical medical services in terms of testing, prevention, treatment of those illnesses. But we're also working in digital health. Um, um, it has to do with the way that we are uh, approached to the consumers because there is a lot about letting them know that there are services that they can access because in many cases they don't know that they, they, they exist. We work with local businesses, we work with governments that, that mainly translate into Ministry of Health so, and industry partners. But when we talk about the, 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 the way that the digital health gets delivered at PSI, there is a lot of consumers, we do communities of influence, but in, in this space of e-learning is when we get to that central space that we will call the workforce. Uh, what I'm referring to is the frontline health workers. It's the people that uh, either we refer to them as community health workers, they work directly with those communities in either educating them about the availability of resources or in, a, in some cases doing some rapid testing for HIV, rapid testing for malaria, in when it was appropriate rapid testing for COVID. Um, uh, we work with doctors, it's obvious, but a lot of nurses and midwives are the ones delivering the health services. Mm -hmm. And we work with pharmacists and lab technicians. And that is the people that we are trying to reach through electronic education. Um, but uh, you will think, okay, you have something that is called the Moodle app. We've been talking about, and we know how, how, how well the Moodle app works in offline environments that is, in the majority of our cases, is super important because we do have problems with uh, access to, to broadband and they can only synchronize in certain places. But the reality is that many of, the, of these health workers are not necessarily familiar and comfortable in using an application that for a student in secondary or tertiary um, education uh, that they use every day could be, it could be simple. Instead, we're trying to mail them in a technology that is really familiar to them. And those technologies, we, we have determined that are things like WhatsApp, are things like Facebook Messenger. Those are applications that are already installed in their devices. We don't have to go through the what is actually a quite complicated process of getting them to download the app, install the app, put a URL and login. That becomes a major challenge. Um, and, and, and then it, it becomes a problem of trying to train them. In most cases, they are remote to us. They, there is over 20 to 30,000 uh, community health workers across all the countries in PSI, nurses and doctors. And it's not possible really to reach them, to get them into a room and get them into the the step-by-step the step of how to use in the Moodle app. So, what we've been experimenting, because uh, I mean, this is not yet in a big scale, is the use of chatbots, primarily WhatsApp, on delivering, uh, on delivering the courses that are set up in, in Moodle. Uh, another reason that this is actually works in many cases is that in many of these countries where you get your airtime, many people don't have contracts and they have pay as you go. Um, and in those pairs you got, uh, there are bundles that are subsidized by Meta. 
So you have access to things like WhatsApp, Facebook, and Facebook Messenger uh, without impacting your one gig or whatever you have bought. So that's another important thing. Um, obviously, the way that we do this is we render the model course in a chatbot based conversation and um, we're going to be seeing this in a second so the way that it flows is that i mean once you get into the telephone number in, into the you call into the number and you say hi is uh, if we see that 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 user is new is um, uh, well if it's not new obviously we already show the courses that are available for enrollment or that he or she is already enrolled or otherwise we we get the user to select the language at the moment we have french portuguese and english and show terms and conditions obviously you need to agree we do the the user registration show the course you select a course show the modules available on those courses. We support very few activities. Is, uh, at the moment, we have mainly implemented the lessons to display the content of the course. We support quizzes and we support feedback. We're gonna see a full demo in a second. Um, but basically, the, the user can go through the chatbot, make progress across those activities, eventually come into the completion of those activities and hopefully the completion of the course. So let, let's actually look into more detail. Uh, we, we have an animation in a second, but let's look at the five kind of key components. So user registration, we keep it very simple. It's first name and last name. We make email optional. And then we use the WhatsApp number or eventually when we do Facebook Messenger, the Facebook conversation the scope page ID is uh, as the identifier. So that becomes the unique identifier of the user. Um, e email is actually optional. Uh, we set the, the language based on the dial into the international dialing code of that telephone. We can say, oh, this person is in Mozambique, so it must be Portuguese. This person is in Tanzania, so it must be English. Um, next thing, is uh, there, there is a limited number of courses that we mark as chatbot compatible. So we show to the user, okay, these are the courses that you can enroll or you already enroll. Um, you can take those courses, we show progress if you already enroll. So lessons, what we do is that we deliver the content of the text. Uh, uh, obviously, you need to design these courses in Moodle thinking that they are going to be rendered in a chatbot. So uh, your paragraph needs to be concise and short because they are going to be coming as text bubbles in the chatbot. You can use images um, uh, and you can also use videos, but if you use videos, uh, they are likely to be very short. You have to be very aggressive with your compression algorithms because uh, particularly in the settings where we work, the, there are challenges with the bandwidth, but certainly images, JPEGs, but our recommendation is to be very aggressive with the compression. And we show in every, uh, every time we show, you know, where are you in your progress within this activity within the course. Quizzes is fundamental to track the progress of the student and to be able to measure knowledge retention. So I'm talking about our community health workers, our nurses, doctors, and so on. Uh, we support currently only multiple choice and true false questions is, um, uh, they are automated, so we're not going to do open text. Is uh, we always show the last version of the question. We support multiple attendments, and as always, we always show at the end the progress. And we also have feedback because at, at this point it was very important for us to to be able to understand is how is people feeling, comf uh, how comfortable are they feeling with the the use of this format for delivering knowledge uh, for delivering education. So let's look at a full demo, these last three minutes. And I think, okay, so the control is there. Well, how do you get it started? Okay, so Somehow we get you into the bot, either because we send you a message or through posters with QRs. 
Um, and basically the bot uh, in this case is for a new user you start with the process of creating an account and what you're doing is creating an account in Moodle so we check that you want to continue this conversation in the language that we have detected based on your dialing code show your terms and conditions and you are expected to accept it otherwise we end the conversation and we proceed with the registration that as I say is very simple we ask two questions what is your first name what is your last name so in this case is Victor Mendoza Victor is sitting there and he's one of the developers is uh, and, and then we ask for your email but you can actually bypass this question and fundamentally what we have done we have created a user registration on the back end so from there we we show the the um, the course offer um, what we have is a custom property on the courses that are, you you need to mark that as a chat compatible course so it renders here you select your course you start your course um, and then we're going to be delivering the content on, on that course so the, the obviously we we're developing simple content the each paragraph is actually being rendered as a message bubble if there is an image it will come in as part of the chat uh, you continue you have to go through all the pages and eventually you will come to a point that we mark completion yes so um and this is later on very important for the statistics about when did you start when did you finish how long did it take to conduct that so the second part is quizzes uh, this is fundamental in the way we we do a lot of pre-testing and post-testing to try to measure the knowledge retention or the change in behavior we support true false multiple answer questions so this is how the quiz is defined in, at the right how it's defined in Moodle at the left how it gets rendered you get your results um, actually we you can also retake the test um, well if it's defined as such and then last the the last activity that we we are supporting is feedback uh, we we support only through a simple selection and open text and actually this has been very useful for us to collect feedback about this this way of delivering uh, delivering courses so at the end uh, I mean you structure your courses probably with pre-test post-test multiple content in the middle but you fundamentally end with a full record of a student where you actually can track the, its progress and, and is uh, actually is output uh, throughout. So let's have a quick uh, okay. So let's actually have a quick look just to some some information about the, the some of the things that we have done and the results. So for example, we did this on the Ministry of Health in Kenya and it was uh, about contraception choice is uh, about the how health workers recommend and do the counseling session with a woman in in terms of offering contraception so we managed to enroll 3,000 users of which we got a 69 completion rate so that means that people took the original test they did the whole content and then we have a, a final test and more recently that year is run is 2022 is um, uh, we did COVID also in the Ministry of Health of Kenya um, and, and in this one is uh, this chart is interesting because it shows uh, the results of the pre-test in you get in, in blue the people that have the correct knowledge before taking the course you have in yellow the ones that did not necessarily have full accuracy on the on the knowledge around COVID-19 and the health workers that have very little correct knowledge of the different elements that are important in COVID-19 as you can see after the course we have a significant evolution on on terms of the we reduce the number of people that uh, we, we increase it in a significant way the people with the, having the correct knowledge around uh, COVID transmission of COVID testing of COVID and so on so how does this work 
So we basically at the moment are using Twilio as an intermediary. Twilio is a communication service that you can use for WhatsApp for some time was one of the few providers of WhatsApp. But now it's possible to connect directly to the backend of WhatsApp. Uh, directly with Meta, it wasn't possible before, and we used Twilio. Um, basically, we have an application that is written in C Sharp uh, using the Microsoft.NET framework. Uh, that basically talks back to Moodle. We use the standard APIs of Moodle, but there was some functionality that wasn't present, and we needed to augment it, and we did a plugin that basically have functions that it creates new endpoints that we can use for the functionality that we need. That plugin, beside uh, that plugin, beside uh, having these endpoints, also stores session information. So that allows users to go back to the to the chatbot and be exactly in the same point that they were the last time. So even if the session have expired, you can resume your conversation at the same point. And obviously, we also have some system logs for troubleshooting and so on. Is uh, we we also store some files as part of that plugin to to have all the multilingual prompts that the pod has and support the the multilingual piece. Um, and as I mentioned, we we add two elements: one to the user profile in terms of we add a country dialing prefix, um, and we also add to the courses a, a property to be able to know if. Of all these courses that you have in your Moodle listeners, is this one of those courses that I should render on uh, on the chatbot? Yes. So, in terms of the installation, I mean the the, the plugin is downloadable from GitHub. We 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 are publishing this as open open source, so we just upload it into Git. And we have done our best effort on creating documentation if other wants to explore, use it. Um, the application per se, as I mentioned, is a, a C Sharp.net application, and you need to run it. Uh, we, we have it available as a Docker container, so you can, rock it, you can run it as a Docker container, or you can install it if you use, if you are familiar with .NET, you probably can install it uh, natively. Um, there is the, um, uh, yeah, we do have a lot of uh, documentation now. Limitations is um, at the moment we only have the connector to WhatsApp through Twilio. Uh, we are planning to uh, change it to have the direct connection with Meta's API, so we can do WhatsApp and Facebook directly with uh, in the in the business API of Meta. Uh, the plugin is working in our Moodle 4.1. Uh, we already know that it has a couple of things that we need to change for 4.2, but that's one of the things that we're planning to do. Uh, we want to explore to, for, so for example, when you use Twilio, you do not have access to what is called quick replies. So we, that's the reason that we present most of the options as press 1, press 2, press 3. But when you actually use the, the API from WhatsApp, you can actually do what is called quick replies that it will be easy for interaction. Um, and actually the, the translations, uh, we don't have a UI for that. So that's one of the things that uh, we plan to do. We support a plugin. The, uh, there is a plugin called Custom Certificate. One of the people like at the end of the course is to get that certificate. And, uh, but that's something that we didn't put on the public release because it's kind of an adaptation that we did from that uh, other plugin. I have the impression that this is it, and uh, I don't know if we have any questions. We have 10 minutes for questions, so if anyone has some. Yep, I see one over there. My question is, what is the Moodle Mobile team's point of view regarding to this development? 
just to enforce what you have done, if, if, if they approve or, or uh, sustain this? Uh, we, we have no idea. <laughs> so if they're here, I will be, we will be very happy to hear their reaction. So, uh, 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 uh. so the, the, there was a, the previous presenter about testing. I don't know if he's still in the room. Yes, yes, I mean, you're asking me what is the opinion of the model development? Yeah, yes. So the question, I don't know if the model development team is here. Is there anyone from the model development team here? I am. I have no official comment one way or another. <laughs> but what I will say is when I saw this proposal come through for the submissions, I was very excited to watch and be here and listen to it. It's great. It's really cool. A really novel use case. Ah. Tim, I had a feeling you would say hello. Well, what I mostly want to say is this seems absolutely awesome. Um, in my own life, my interaction with chatbots is very, very bad customer service. And I can see this is actually a chatbot that does some good, presumably mainly because it's being used to deliver high quality teaching. Um, and I think your reasons for having, doing it with a chatbot and not Moodle Mobile app made perfect sense. It's what's needed in your context. Um, yeah, I, I should probably ask a question. And I can see you already have a very full roadmap. But at some point in the future, do you think you might support some additional question types for the quiz? Yes, yeah, so, so we, we will explore that. I mean, at the, at the moment, um, um, uh, yes, I mean, we want to explore other possibilities at the moment. Our focus is more ab around enhancing the usability. So that's the reason for the quick replies and using Facebook Messenger, using the API because the cost. But yeah, certainly the idea would be not only other quiz, or other questions types, maybe even explore other activities when the time comes. Is, uh, is uh, we at the moment, yes, that's. Uh, and if I'm allowed one other question, actually, did you hit any technical difficulties making this work with Moodle? Sorry, I'm speaking as a Moodle developer. Are there things we should be doing to make it easier for people to create solutions like this? Well, I mean, is uh, um, we're very new to to Moodle. I mm -hmm. mean, is uh, I have I used Moodle previously when facilitating workshops as a teacher and so on, but never development. And it's only been in the last twelve months that we've been getting into the into the Moodle war. So the API give you a significant number of functions, but not everything. But then it was incredible to realize that you can write a plugin. Mm -hmm and create more functions and create more endpoints and expose whatever you want and create a table and store whatever you want. So, so in that sense, although the API does not expose everything, they give you the tools, Moodle gives you the tools to basically build anything on top of Moodle. So, so that, that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, uh, I, we believe that this has to be a completely separate app because it's running completely separate and connecting to. So I, I cannot think right now of, of telling you what else is needed. No, well, ex I mean, excellent. It's mainly just brilliant work. And it's, yeah. it's nice that Moodle is contributing to something that is clearly having a positive impact in the world. So thank you very much. And thank you for sharing it with us today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit how you enable teachers to create courses and um, what yeah. could be done to increase the number of courses that are fitting that yeah. format? Yes, I mean, I, I guess I mean is uh, the, uh, at PSI, the, they have been developing content uh, for 50 years. Uh, and in many cases, it was printed copies uh, with illustrations for community health workers. Um, um, so, so it's more an institutional development of courses rather than teachers. So we don't have individual teachers deciding, okay, I'm going to do my own course. It's more an institutional course with created content that it has been, uh, from a medical point of view, um, uh, quality assured. 
that it had the correct content and it gets tested previously before delivery. So, so we, we don't have any cases of allowing anyone to just go and say, I'm going to have this course available. It's, it's normally uh, the Department of the Sexual Reproductive Health already have a curriculum and they will modify it into a shot compatible course and then if the malaria if we have a course in malaria testing there is already a protocol and in some cases it's the protocol for that country that is mandated by the ministry of health so in that sense it's quite close what we're doing because it has to be curated and and validated from a medical point of view they, 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 I believe, I mean, I, I'm not directly on the delivery of these courses, but I, I think for some cases they're evaluating to, to, to run the course and to use the, that as a credit towards your professional qualifications as a continued practicing nurse or community health worker. Um, I have a question also. Um, we are uh, trying to reach how to reach groups in Global South and um, tried it with IVR solution, SMS based training, but not yet with a connection to Moodle, which would be very beneficial for us. Uh, if you have the direct connection to, to WhatsApp, for example, to the API, is there any costs involved because we really have to scale and yes. the, the solutions so far were really cost effective for us? Yes, so, so in that sense, is uh, Facebook Messenger has no cost at the moment. They, these things change all the time, yes. So one day is free, the next day is not free. And in the case of WhatsApp, is uh, there was kind of a, you, we were paying 0 0.001 per message with Twilio, but with WhatsApp you get 1,000 conversations per month when you connect directly to the API of WhatsApp. And after that, there is a standard price, but if you are a non-profit organization, you may negotiate with them and they give you an exception for 12 months and then they will renew it or not. So, so, so yes, they, they are costs involved, but they are minimal, yes? So they are quite cost effective and, um, and this is constantly changing. It's, uh, Do we have any more questions? Just quick, you don't have to run with the microphone. <laughs> How big is the PSI group? We need to pick it up on the mic. Yes. Oh, sorry. So, so, so PSI is, uh, is active. Okay. Yeah, I repeat the question. So the, the question is, how, how big is PSI? So, so PSI is uh, based out of Washington, D.C. Um, they operate in over 50 countries, and in each country, the operations vary. I mean, in Myanmar, it's one of the largest operations. There is over 3,000 clinics with uh, 7,000 health workers, but then you have other operations where you may have only 20 clinics and you have a workforce of about 150 health workers. But then again, the idea is that PSI is trying to move also into the public sector and there is collaboration with the public sectors. So in many cases, what we're trying to do is to move that expertise, that knowledge, that, that those techniques into Ministry of Health. So there is a lot of work in collaboration or directly with the Ministry of Health on those countries. Just be aware of the Moodle trademark uh, because what you have done, it's, it's, it's a great thing. So if huh. probably in the future, this might be um, just using Moodle chatbot, this might be a conflict or infringement in the future. Just maybe I'm here, the um, uh, lawyer, the, the devil's lawyer here. Uh, okay. <laughs>
Okay, the, the, the leak only does a, a redirect you into a, a, a Confluence uh, page where we have the, the full documentation of the, of the work done. That's, that's all we have at the moment. Okay, but I, I will check with you now. You tell me more about that. What is the issue? Yes, here? otherwise, feel free to get it, move to the uh, middle stand and ask uh, for someone higher up. Okay. Because uh, our lawyer loves dealing with copyright. Thank you very much. Thank you.